one animal in particular captured his attention, an African gray parrot named Nkisi. Nkisi is one of the most remarkable parrots known to science. I heard there's a parrot living in New York who apparently can sense what his owner is thinking. A parrot with a vocabulary in excess of anything ever achieved, as far as I know, with a parrot, a parrot that uses sentences, uses language meaningfully. Do you want a cracker? Yep, do you want some? You can have some. You wanna come over here and get it? I realized he was special very quickly, and he's only seven now, and his vocabulary is, I believe, 1,077, which, you know, it's just astonishing. I mean, he was learning a new word almost every other day. I mean, I was interested in the idea of trying to have a communicative dialogue with a being from another species. That was my goal in teaching him language because I was really just interested in what he would have to say. I love you. I love you too. What I wanted to do was just give him the tools of language and the creative freedom to use them to express himself. Do you have a candle? Yeah, we put a candle for Jane. Hello. Jane couldn't pass up the chance to meet in Kisi the next time she was in New York. Hello. And as I walked into the room, I said, oh, hello, you must be in Kisi. I've heard a lot about you. And he said, that's Jane, got a chimp. Now, he'd seen all the pictures of me in the books, and I think he'd seen a video. He had never said chimp before. You got your little toy? What little toy? <laughs> he made all the right sounds. Chimps go like that. Very good. African greys are thought to be the most intelligent of all parrots and the best at reproducing speech. Hello. <laughs> He'll comment about things I'm doing. He will express concern for me. Like he, he tries to kind of look out for me. He will reflect upon his past and even talk about his future, which is also, I think, a very surprising thing that, you know, when he has an experience that is like a big adventure for him, he will talk about it for months, um, like his first ride in a car. If he sees somebody who's once taken him in a car, he will immediately start, want to go in the car, want a car. And uh, if Amy says, I haven't got a car, he says, get a car, <laughs> phone for a car. So I really came to understand a lot about his mind and his awareness because he was able to express his own thoughts and experiences. I can't reach you. I found very quickly that everything she told me was in fact true. This parrot was totally remarkable, utterly astonishing. And we then set up a series of controlled experiments to see if the parrot really could pick up her thoughts telepathically. Amy and Nkisi start in the same room. There are two cameras, one with Amy, one with Nkisi. Amy picks up her camera and walks downstairs to another room 55 feet away. Now completely separated, Amy opens up sealed envelopes containing photographs she has never seen before. One at a time, she looks at each image for two minutes. I didn't really instruct him other than saying, you know, I'm gonna go look at these pictures and I want you to tell me. And, you know, he, he, he did choose to participate quite often, which was great. Oh. Did you know, to take mental state was really critical if I were trying to like send the image like like out through my it wouldn't work at all it only worked when I was just genuinely immersed in the image and fascinated which was kind of replicating the normal situation Remember, Amy and Inkisi are in separate rooms, 55 feet apart. Not only would he describe the general image, but as I noticed a detail, 
he would articulate that detail, you know, the moment I noticed it. So there was one image where it's an image of a car. Our target was car. But the driver has his head out of the car. It's kind of hard to notice at first. And I was going, oh, that's weird, the guy. And then at the moment I noticed it, Kesey said, you put your head out or something like that. And, and we actually were not able to score that as a hit. It really showed me that he was just so tuned in, you know, that, that just instant, um, the speed of thought, you know, he, he was sort of surfing the edge of my consciousness. Out of 71 photographs, in Kisi, correctly identified and imaged 23 times. The results were far above the chance level. I mean, massively significant statistically. So this was a highly successful experiment showing a very significant effect whereby in Kisi really did seem to be picking up what was in Amy's mind. I think that all of the work that I've done with Kisi has been dependent on the closeness of our bond. Can I have a kiss? Okay. Because it's about communication, and unless you have that kind of social bond, you know, maybe, maybe they don't want to talk to you. You know, there has to be some kind of closeness to spark that engagement. Can I have a kiss? Yeah. Okay. Can I reach you? Okay. What Amy and Inkisi appear to be doing is communicating their thoughts at a distance. This is telepathy, 